Hello everyone, and welcome to Mike's Retro Tech. Welcome to the Retro Tech Loft. Uh, today's video is another repair video, thankfully. Um, I'm getting better at these. There are a lot of things recently I've worked, the Spectrums, the um, Interface One, things like that, the printer, as you'll see. Um, so today, I've got one of these, which I remember having when I had my original Spectrum. So it's an Ingersoll computer program data recorder. Now, back in the day, I think these were quite expensive. Um, although I'm not so sure that, I, but I do know that I had one um, and it worked quite well because it's got like load level and it was specifically for the BBCs and the Commodores and the Spectrums. Um, the problem with this, I believe, is that there's no audio coming out of it. Now, there's a speaker there, okay, so hopefully audio should come out of that, but then there's also um, in, auxiliary, remote, and out. So the out there goes to the Spectrum, I believe. Yes, there's no other ports on there. And um, there was a remote control for it, and that's the auxiliary input, and that's the commanding. Um, CMT in, I have no idea what that is. But anyway, I believe from what, so I got this, oh gosh, I got this about a decade ago and it's been sat in a box waiting to be fixed. So I thought today would be a good day to try and get it fixed, um, if I can. So I wanna find um, a power, um, a figure eight power cable. I'm sure I've got one somewhere. I'll find it, we'll plug it in and we'll see whether it plays through the speaker first. If it does, we'll try it on the Spectrum and see whether it actually plays anything. But I'm sure it isn't. I'm sure that's why it was put in the box because it doesn't work. Right, so after a quick rummage, I found a two pin cloverleaf cable, a figure eight cable. So it's gonna plug it in and we're gonna see whether it blows up in my face. It shouldn't do, but we never know. So I'm gonna plug it in over here there we go. Oh, there we are. Okay, so the power's already on. So we'll turn it on. Power's on. And then we will eject. And what should we put in? Let's see. Let's try the ubiquitous maker chip. So rare, this piece of software, you know, it's very hard to get hold of. <laughs> right. Um, it plays that way. So we'll put it in like that. And then we'll see load. Does anything come out? No. So nothing's coming out the speaker. Well, that's a shame. And just to prove, it's definitely gone to the cassette, it's definitely gone to the, the bit of the, the game, the program. So it's just nothing. And there appears to be no signal flashing either. Yeah, okay. So, we need to take it apart, have a look inside, and is it corroded and it needs a cleaning with some IPA? Or it just, it really is just completely knackered. And if that's the case, then it needs to go to the recycling. So, I'll take it apart now, make sure there's uh, all the capacitors are um, emptied. And then we'll see what happens. What have we got here? Ingersoll model. XK696 computer program data recorder serial number 418,560 so they made quite a lot of these made in Korea always remove mains plug from wall socket when not in use or before any service operation never remove covers unless qualified to do so ha <laughs> ha um, this unit contains dangerous voltages yes I am sure it does right <clears throat> well Get my big boy pants on and get my screwdriver and let's uh, 
unplug these, unscrew these and see what we get. It's a small one. Oh, there we are. Oh, huh. Right. So there we go. Um, yeah. That's why it doesn't work. Because of all that corrosion. Um, damn. This is the first time I've opened this, so I've, I've, I've no idea what's going on with this, but that that is proper corroded. I wonder if something's been spilt on that. Hmm. Interesting. So, we've got, what have we got? We've got two screws there that hold the plate on and then we've got a ground what looks like a grounding cable yeah this is this is completely shot okay oh well it's not what i was expecting but there we go let's have a let's have a gander at this these are really corroded blimey oh they're so rusty this is one of the tape mechanisms actually worked look right so I don't know if you can see that the solder mask has come off some of those so I'm assuming that they're broken damn so what can we do black white Black, red, white. Do I desolder all these and take the board off? I might have to make a note of these because otherwise I'll not remember which way they go in. The power's corroded. The ground is... Yeah, look at that. The ground is so corroded that that wash has come off and that wash is broken. Wowzers. And I don't really want to take that off because this is this appears to be soldered in as opposed to being in a socket. Oh look. The solder mask has just come off when I've rubbed it, I've rubbed it very gently. Wow, that has had so much corrosion. Okay, first things first. I think we'll get the IPA out again. And we'll do a quick rundown and a quick rub down of that. Just to see whether it exposes any broken tracks. See whether we can clean that as well while I've got the IPA out. No, that's so corroded. It might be possible to fix that with some um, tin foil, maybe. I don't know, but that's so badly corroded. Wow. I bet whoever I got this off, I bet their children many years ago spilled some juice on it maybe, or somebody late at night using their Spectrum or their Commodore 64. Um, yeah, spilled some juice on it or something. 
house. Wow. Okay, so other than it being manky, um, there's nothing really to indicate what the problem is. It, um, it's got to be on this board really, so I might reflow some of these joints and then see if that helps, but I doubt it. <coughs> I, may, I may have to take a photograph of these, unsolder them all, desolder these from here and then see what's going on because these are the yeah this board here controls the um, the volume and the load level and there's also there's a lot of capacitors under here and possibly one of those has gone pop so um, yeah I'm gonna have to do that now then just take a photograph and do a, um, a desolder of these Right, the soldering iron's on, set it to 330 degrees, and I've taken a photograph of all this, so hopefully I should be able to take it all apart and get it back together again in one go. So the first thing I need to do is snip those two there, which hold the cable in. So one of those. And one of those there, so those cables now are free. Just need to make sure that they go back in the right place. And then if I put some flux on here to help the desoldering process, do this side first. Okay, so we pull out. Yeah, there we go. So there's the the ribbon connector comes out of there. So that should now be able to pull over and see what we've got. Yeah, there we go. Have to make sure we don't lose. Oh, where are we? that right what have we got they look all right oh look huge amount of corrosion there and there And there, damn, and there, and there, so it's corroded everywhere, gosh, that's really, really not what I wanted to see, corrosion there, um, corrosion there, corrosion there, damn, right, okay, so that's going to be a lot harder to fix, I think, um,
tinkling with that. Okay, that's out there as well. Right, I think what I need to do is take another photograph and um, unsolder these wires here and then pull the whole lot off. Nightmare. Okay, so the motherboard is out. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, this bit we know about because that's the bit that I've just desoldered, that's fine. So we've got... Where are we? Corrosion there. The cap hasn't exploded, but there's corrosion around it. Corrosion around there, corrosion around there, round there, round there. Basically, corrosion everywhere. And it's just absolutely manky. See, there's corrosion there. That might have blown. Corrosion there on that pot. Which is there, you see. Corrosion there. I mean, okay, all I can do is give it a damn good clean. Just douse it in IPA. And just see what we've got. those two there I believe so let's get the old soldering iron to it All the solders come off that straight away. Yeah, there. Okay. Groovy! Groovy, groovy, groovy. So, that is out there. C14. Let's make a dot. So we know which one it is that we need to replace. Can't even tell. 
tell what it is. We get the magnifier to it. It's a ten volt, one hundred microfarad. Right, where can I write that down so I don't forget it? I ain't got no paper. All well, the things I've not got in this office is no paper in the studio. There's no paper. Right. So it's a 10 volt. One hundred microfarad. Yeah, something weird that I've just noticed on this. I don't know whether this is the same for all capacitors, but can you see? Probably not. There's like two very fine little copper wires coming out of it. I have no idea why that is. Unless it's come off the board and that's the problem, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, that's what I need to get. I need to get one of those capacitors, maybe a full set. But we'll come back in a minute and see what I can manage to do. A few moments later. Right, unfortunately not. I don't have any of those capacitors, so I'm going to have to buy some. But what I do have is I found one of those, which is a replacement for this. So we can actually get that replaced, which is good, because um, that means that's one component we've got replaced. Ooh. Nearly caught the cable with my uh, soldering iron then. the old bit of a clean there with that still quite gammy and grotty that but it's much better than it was. Just try and uh, clean up those holes if I can. Yeah. Okay. And how was that set? That was like it was set the same way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So we're in there. Ooh, gosh, that's hot. Yeah, so push that down. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Right, that one on there. That one on there. And a 
nice shoulder blob on there. Good. Right. Excellent. One component replaced. One component replaced. Now, I mean really, 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 I should replace every single component on the board because there's so much corrosion. I mean, that one there's probably got a rusty leg. But I don't really want to replace it, if you can help it. But I think I might have to, especially around there, especially around those because they are absolutely gammy. So what's that under there? That's those, isn't it? Those two there, that one. Four legs of that, that's the pot. Yeah. might not be fixable you know it might not be fixable right what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make a note of all these capacitors and see how much it's gonna to cost to replace them all because if it's gonna cost like 30 quid then it ain't worth it I'll just sling this away out of the way um, but if it's only gonna be like pence per capacitor then I might chance my arm and give it a whiz. A few moments later. Um, as we saw last time, I was going to go and document all the capacitors that needed replacing, and I have done that, and they're all here on my sheet. So there's 50 volt, 1 microfarad, there's 10 volt, 100 microfarad, 220, there's loads basically, all the way from um, cell 1101 all the way up to 132. I'm missing 130, but I think that's this big one here. Um, that's the big one there. So I'm gonna go through and unsolder each of these, desolder them all. But one thing to notice is I've just found when I've desoldered this is that C118, which is a 50 volt 3.3 microfarad, as you can see, is exp it's not expanded at the top, it's expanded around the sides like it's just gone poof and exploded and it's all crust it's crusty underneath. So they're definitely the capacitors have gone and probably some resistors are well on the motherboard. So I'm going to take all these off. I'm not going to film it because you've seen countless videos I'm sure of people removing uh, capacitors off motherboards and it's just the same process. Um, and then once I've done all that I will try and clean the boards as best as possible. These look to be ceramic caps so I might have to replace those as well. I'm not sure, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But for the moment, I'm gonna replace all that. I'm gonna take all these off, and I'm gonna order off eBay a full set of each of these, and then we'll see how much it's gonna cost. Right, so I've taken all the caps off the board now. That was an effort, really, I tell you, there's a lot. These are the ones that are all manky and ganky and horrible. As you can see, they're all minging inside. And these are the five that were actually quite good, but I'm going to replace them anyway. So there's loads of crap on the motherboard. It just needs a damn good clean now with IPA. Um, and then any any components that look like they're not right, like there's a little fuse bit there. That's up. That's up. That's up. That's up. I'm just going to resolder, push them in, just make sure they're all right, and then order all these because it's not going to work without these capacitors and there's a lot of them um, 31 of them I believe unless I can find C0 uh, C100 sorry if I can find C100 then there's obviously something else but um, there's not I think I, I think it starts at C101 but yeah um, that's it, that's why it doesn't work. So hopefully, with this clean up, the audio should work, and I might even take the controller off here and see whether or not there's something wrong with the, the switches and the levers. But I'm gonna IPA this now, and then see how it cleans up.
Four to six days later. Right, as you saw in a previous clip, I took all the capacitors off the circuit board and the circuit board was left. Oh, if I can get out the bag in that state there with no capacitors on it at all. Um, let's reorganize this so they're the, the volume and the, the monitor level. Uh, they were the old capacitors that came off the, um, the board. There's my bag of screws. And then there was the list of capacitors that I needed to purchase. So now I've got some of these. Now, as you can see, technology has changed quite a bit because, as an example, this was the old 16 volt 220 microfarad capacitor and that is now the replacement so it's half the size where are we? Oh. there 16 volt 220 microfarad so as you can see um, I don't actually think there's anything wrong with that but it is a bit naff at the bottom so I think there's probably a leakage um, so yeah amazing so what I'm going to do now I'm going to fit all of these onto here and then we'll see whether or not this has now fixed the problem of it not working it might do, it might not, there might be other components on here that need replacing, but the board itself now looks nice and clean. Um, there's obviously still some rust here, but I can't get rid of that. There's a bit on there I might just try with some more... Um... Oh yeah, look at that, it's still, still horrible. I might try with some more um, IPA just very briefly and a cotton swab just to see whether or not I can uh, get it a bit cleaner but I don't think I can do because it's as clean as I think I'm going to get it but we'll see the next step though is to put these capacitors back on the board and test it and see if it works okay so I've put the first one on I've not uh, I've not soldered it yet I'm going to solder that up so what I'm going to do I'm going to solder these in without recording audio I'm just going to do a time lapse of this because there's other things that need fixing like there's like a fuse wire there that's bent that should really be pushed in all the way to the end you see yeah so anyway I'm going to get this soldered and then do the rest of them out of this box so watch along with me
when I get that 109 capacitor. The next clip I'm sure you'll see it. What I can do while I'm waiting for this capacitor to turn up is um, this is the protective layer <clears throat> that was on top and this is the grounding sheet I think so it's um, yeah shiny on that side metallic on that side so what I think I might do I might create a new one out of this piece of card so basically just trace around it and then cut it out and then punch those holes and then coat this side in tin foil and then we'll see whether or not I mean it should work there's no reason why not because it's just a grounding sheet so roughly cut it out I'm not even worried really about the round corners although I'm sure it would trigger some people so let's uh, let's round the corners off there we go so as you can hear this morning the um, the workmen are actually not in the workyard behind the house they're on the main road they're resurfacing the main road now because our, our part of the estate is complete and we need proper roads so the grids are being removed and they're drilling and digging the temporary tarmac up and they're putting new tarmac down amazing so so we now need to punch some holes in here because you can see that matches which is great I wish I'd got a hole punch have I got a hole punch I have somewhere but I don't know where it is hmm that's a shame oh well so what we can do what have I got here piece of wood I don't really want to use my drill but what I have got I've got a tiny little drill bit in my bag of goodies I've got one of those and I've also got one of those tiny little drill so I think what can I use that one oh why is that one stuck in there that's not good <laughs> that's proper stuck in there oh well probably going to have to do it that way instead yes there we go Does that go in there? No, you see that one's too big. Can't use that one. I have to use that one. There we go, that's better. And it really is only to put screws in. So as long as the pilot holes are there, we should be okay. So I'm drilling these holes now, so that when I've covered it in tin foil, from the back, I know where I can uh, poke the holes. There we go, okie doke. There we go, and let's put those back on there now so nothing's lost there we go and we could probably we'll probably use that actually um, 
to make the holes bigger. Yes. Right, so we're done. Right, okay, so that bit's done there. There's not much I can do now until that resistor, no, sorry, that capacitor turns up, um, which will be, I don't know, a couple of days or so. So I'll be back in the next clip with that capacitor. Stay tuned. Okay, so a few days later, the missing capacitor, the 10 volt, 22 UF, UF, 22 microfarad capacitor has turned up um, and it just needs to go in there. So I'm gonna solder that on there, get the cables put onto this, see whether or not it's actually working and we can get this, um, yeah, back to normal. Now I'm a bit dubious because it appears there is a bit of this missing. Yeah, I don't know where that's gone. That's me, um, mm, piece of a uh, my piece of springy wire. Mm, damn, that must be somewhere. I bet I've dropped it. All right, well we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Anyway, I'm going to fit this, and then we'll see whether or not it's brought this to life. I had to buy two of these. I can't just buy one at a time. So, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things. Uh, and we'll just check to make sure that it is. It is 22 microfarad, 10 volts. And that goes in there. Just like that. There we go. Right, so I've got my soldering iron set to 350 degrees again. That one goes on there. Probably too much. Yeah, there we go, that will do. Right. Billington Whiz. <clears throat> so that is every capacitor back on the board. I don't know whether that cable should have gone round there like that, out of the way. Maybe not. But let's see if we can pull it out of the way there, just like that. Nice. Yes. Okay. So, that component's been replaced, and every electrolytic cap has been replaced as well now. And that will fit nicely, just there again like it did before. And hopefully, uh, where are we just there like that? And hopefully this will fix it now. So, that was full of crap. The question then is, where is that spring? Yes, that'll be a that'll be a bit of a bit of a pain if I've lost that, won't it? Right, I'm going to search for it and see whether I've can find it. A few moments later. Right, oh, I found it. It was actually on the floor. So it's a good job I found that. So there we go. Right. Coolio. So I've got my holes in there as well. I found something to poke holes through. So that's okay. We've got holes in there. Holes in there, holes in there, I can put silver foil on that, that's fine. All the screws, plus the spring in there. Motherboard, top of the mooring into you. Okay, so there, like that. The biggest challenge I think I've got is this. ribbon connector because it is very very fine okay. 
Right, well I've checked on my photographs and it looks like the only thing that needs to be soldered underneath is the ribbon cable. Everything else is soldered on top. So we'll solder the ribbon cable in first and then we'll get everything else put back together as it was. I believe goes That's going to be a nightmare to get in. Oh no, there we go. Yes. And then that goes in there like so. Yes. Yes. So now, what I need to do is I need to get me piece of cardboard covered in tin foil put on there like so screwed down screwed down screwed down screwed down actually that's not a screw is it that's the that's the hole for the um, potentiometer that's the hole for the um, For the head alignments I think so that's fine so we need to make sure that's all nice and tidy so that we can actually get a little screwdriver down there yeah just like so yes there we go that will do Right, I'll go and get this covered in tin foil. Then we can put the screws back in, screw the case up, and then we can see exactly if this works or not. Okay, so there we go. That piece of cardboard is covered with glue and tin foil.
and we poke the holes through that way. Yep. Yep. And yep. So we have to make sure that we don't We don't cause a short underneath. So let's take a bit of that away like that. Because it is just it's just a hole to access. The twiddling will be a bit. Right. Now that looks a bit corroded, doesn't it? So let's see. Let's try. Can we do this here? Let's have a see. Actually, we've got a bit of sandpaper. That might work. these screws is really really rusty well in fact they're all rusty so I should really do it properly and use some anti-rust paint you know some rust converter but I don't have any and I don't have the time really so let's put that on there done in the world these they're not made properly let me I put that under there like that maybe that's all right that's still on yeah good that's still on right there we go that's better right one there see I've missed a hole oh no I've not okay so that one then obviously just screws in through there because it's a grounding plate and then that one screws in there like so I do recall that those cables were actually cable tied somewhere but I don't know where so we can't do that so what we need to do is probably cable tie them just here I don't know just stick them down with some glue or some what have we got oh some electrical tape that'll do
stick them down there like so. Right, now, that's quite corroded, but I don't think it makes a, a jot of difference, that to be fair. Right, so let's have a see. Cables are tucked in nicely under there. So let's have a recap. So what have we done? We've taken this board off. We've replaced all the electrolytic capacitors. We haven't touched the ceramic capacitors or any other components on the board. We've get a good clean. We've resoldered all these joints and these cables. And we've created a new grounding plate there. just in case I blow the fuses in the loft because we are only on standard domestic fuses we aren't on anything anything Billy Wiz okay so we plug it in over here yep yeah. and power's on okay fantastic I need to get a spectrum cassette and we'll use make a chip just because it's what I've got at hand and it plays that way I believe I might also have to clean the mechanisms so play now it didn't do that before did it Success. Okay, so in the first part of the video, as you probably saw, um, it didn't play anything. The counters went up, the power was on, um, and there was no signal. But I don't know what that signal's for, so we'll look at that later. But now there was there was literally there was nothing. It's a bit cranky, but I think that's in here. And it's really loud. That is so good. So there we go. That is the Ingersoll computer program data recorder. Uh, I don't know what number it is. Um, actually, I do know what number it is. The XK696 computer program data recorder. Um, the serial number 418560, as I mentioned previously in the video. Um, so there we go. Completely not working. Totally motor spinning, but nothing happening. To audio working via the monitor speaker. The next video. I will test the Sinclair Spectrum to see whether or not it actually loads this into the Sinclair Spectrum. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful and informative. Um, I hope you're able to fix your own Ingersoll tape deck if you've got one that looks the same, looks like there was all leakage and water spillage and all sorts on that. So I will be much appreciative if you subscribe to the channel. Uh, don't forget to click on the bell notification icon and then click on all so that you get notifications from YouTube when I upload more video. Leave me a like, share the video with your friends and family or somebody you know might benefit from this. Leave me a comment, have you got one of these, do you use it all the time, have you got one in storage, is it broken, can you fix it using this video, let me know. And as ever, keep safe everybody, thanks for watching, 
See you next time.